Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Headbangers Kitchen Live on YouTube. And as promised yesterday, here I am. If you're joining the live stream, uh, then, well, um, just to give you guys a heads up, I am Headbangers Kitchen. I am a keto recipe and diet channel. Um, I am based out of India, but I am currently in Brighton in the United Kingdom. I'm staying at my friend Anu's house. And we're going to be doing some live cook here on YouTube. So I've got myself a nice cup of black coffee with one drop of stevia. And I'm waiting for people to tune into the live stream. And uh, then we're going to get started on the cooking. So cheers, guys. Thank you for joining in. Ah. So it's a lovely day here in Brighton. It is quite chilly, uh, which I'm not complaining about because I believe it's like 40 degrees in Mumbai city. So I'm not excited to get back to that hot weather. And I'm quite enjoying the lovely weather here in Brighton. So um, we've got a few people joining in. I'm just waiting for more people to show up. Then we'll start because... Uh, otherwise, what's the point? Everyone will join the live stream and they'll be like, what are you doing? I can't keep up with you, right? Hey, hello, Humera. Hello, Abhishek. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, good to see you all here. I think the people are in um, Great. So maybe before I kickstart, I can uh, say hello to a few of you. Hello, Aisha. Hello, Girpreet. Hello, Chilita. Good to see you all here. Right. Maybe we should get started now. It's a good time to be cooking. Right. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Lovely to have you all here. Uh, hello, Vidya B. Long time. Uh, hello, Anuria. Right. So what's cooking today, guys? We're going to be cooking up, and I should actually start cooking ASAP because uh, we're making duck. So these are duck legs. And... I'm making a pusin, which is a small chicken. So I didn't even know what this was. Pusin is basically, and this is a corn-fed pusin. Uh, it's basically a small chicken. So uh, a chicken that's less than 28 days old and weighs less than 750 grams. That's a pusin. So um, this company, Gressing, makes amazing quality duck and they also have pusin. So the whole idea of today's recipe is to make something that is super easy. So uh, because this is not my kitchen, uh, it still takes me a while to get comfortable in somebody else's uh, kitchen. Right. The chicken is eating corn. Don't worry. You don't have to eat the corn. Now, what I love about meat in the UK is that every packet gives you cooking instructions. So you really can't mess up the cooking. So for example, this duck legs, it says cooks in 90 minutes. So it, it literally says prick skin and season roast in the oven. It's reversed, I think, because it's a front camera. And uh, yeah, so um, we're going to cook this now and we're going to make it really simply because, like I said, I want to just easy as possible. So we're just going to be using one roasting tray. So there's no mess. There's no fussing about nothing. It's going to be and super simple. OK, so the first thing we got to do is we're checking the package and the duck. It says uh, you roast the duck at uh, 180 Celsius. For a regular oven, 160 Celsius if it's a fan oven, which is what I'm using. So my friend Anu has a lovely oven here. Yeah, a lovely oven. So we're going to preheat the oven now to 100 and uh, I'm going to do 170, I think. 170. Yeah. And I'm going to preheat the oven now. Awesome. Great. So that's done. That's going to take some time. So while we do that, uh, uh, hey, my dad is here. Hi, dad. Good to see you. Right. So while we do that, it's time to prep the birds. Now I've got to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's see. Right. 
So right now, all I'm doing is I'm just opening the packet. Oh, and there's a little thing that says peel here. Oh, and look. Oh, oh, there are instructions. That's so cool. That's so cool. There are instructions here. So it says 45 minutes to cook it. Oh, it's given me a full recipe, which I'm not going to use. I'm going to make my own. Uh, but, but, oh, fantastic. So it says uh, you cook the pusin at about 170 Celsius. So it's around the same temperature as the duck. So they're both going to cook together in the roasting tray. Fantastic. Perfect. So... I'm just going to take this packaging off. And the bird comes already trussed. <laughs> so if you, if you pick up the bird and this iPhone is like already trussed here, they've already tied it up. And literally just putting it in the roasting tray. And I'm going to just use salt. I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. Uh, just some salt and some paprika. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. <sighs> right, let's try it. Let's try this. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. Right. Great. Salt here. And I'm just going to season the pusin. A little bit of salt across the bird. Make sure I get some between the legs as well. And it's a really small bird. Yeah, so just pat the salt in. Maybe, maybe it needs a little bit of... Uh, I don't know, oil on it, but I don't know where the oil is kept right now. <laughs> but yeah, and I've got some. And so Anu's got a little spice rack here. So lots of spices are kept here. So I'm just going to use some paprika for this. Just some pat it into the skin. So just. And the thing is, whatever seasoning falls into the pan, that's going to make your like gravy and stuff. So, so that poussin is ready. Yeah. And that's done. Keep it in the corner of the roasting tray. Now I got to wash my hands, guys, because whenever you're handling raw meat, you got to keep washing your hands. So I'm just going to do. Oh, the water is cold in the UK. Oh, yeah. Right. Also, paprika. Paprika stains your hands. Okay. Next time I come and do a cooking live in the UK, I think I'm going to get an assistant to walk around me with the camera. This is, it's a little tricky to film yourself and uh, lighting. Yeah. It's horrible. Why, iPhone, stick to the focus. Arg. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. All uh, right. So. This is painful. So let's move on to the duck legs. We need to get the duck legs. Now, the duck legs, I'm going to marinate with just, again, salt and some five spice. Because five spice goes really well with duck legs. And it gives you, like, this lovely aromatic duck and this duck is going to be good right is also keto yes so the thing is i i'll be honest as some of you know if you tuned in yesterday i'm not doing keto right now but uh, whatever i'm cooking is all keto so all this is keto i may eat, eat it with some bread but uh, the, the chick the pussy and the duck is keto 100 percent in fact, you could totally throw some veggies in as well and 
wrong with this. So let's get the duck. Let's cut the duck. There you go. And should have. Let's see if we can find a way to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Right. Poussin. Poussin. Sorry, it's not poussin, it's poussin. Right, so I'm cutting open the plastic. And uh, yeah. Okay, this knife is not very sharp. Ah, what am I doing? Right. So, okay. There you go. Duck legs, everybody. Beautiful duck legs. Right, so what I'm going to do is, once again, I said this is all about convenience and making things easy. So no cutting board, nothing, yeah? I'm just going to take the roasting tray. I'm going to put the duck legs in here and one duck leg here. Right? Get rid of this, the packaging. Right. Now all we got to do is salt. Salt the duck legs. One side and now the other. Yeah. Now I'm going to put some five spice. So we got five spice here. Whoa, that's a lot of it. Oh, right. Okay, maybe I'll just put it on one side because a lot of it fell out. Or maybe not. I don't know. Let's put some on the other side as well. There you go. Ah, the sun is the sun has come out in Brighton. Whoa, look at how sunny it is. Look at that. The sun is out. It's crazy. And I'm suddenly like super hot. Okay. So if you can see here now, one sec. Uh this is painful. Right. So there's the duck which I've marinated. I put the five spice on it. And here's the poussin with paprika and salt. And this is now ready to go into the oven. And once again, as I said, you have to wash your hands. Every time you work with raw meat, you have to wash your hands. So making sure I wash my hands properly. I kept this hand clean so I could adjust the camera. And the water is so cold. Oh, it's cold, 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 cold water. Poussin, my wife is texting me telling me how to pronounce Poussin. <laughs> yes, yes, Dipti. I got it. Dipti opening the live stream. Yeah, so the oven is probably and that's just it's a beautifully simple um thing to do. So what I'm gonna do is uh let's 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 put the let birds in the oven. Yeah so we got the poussin and the uh the duck legs and this is going to cook for 45 minutes for the uh, poussin, poussin, and uh, 90 minutes for the duck legs. So I'm going to put, I'm going to open the beautiful big oven that she has. And in goes all the meat. There it is. And sh shut the oven. Right. So, uh, hey, Alexa, set a 45 minute timer. 45 minutes starting now beautiful right the first thing i need to do now is is i need to take off this jacket because it's so hot now suddenly the sun has come out uh in in the in brighton and yeah right so we have a lot of time to kill now so i have two options i could either leave the live stream now and come back after uh i guess uh 45 minutes or an hour or hour and a half when the food is ready or we could sit down and just have a chat on you know things right so I can also sort of think of what I can do so we have some avocado in the fridge um, 
I thought maybe I'll make some guacamole. Like, you know, we have some fresh tomatoes, uh, some, um, oh, you know what I should do? Wait, I completely forgot. Hang on, guys. Yeah. So whenever you're roasting things in the oven, oops, okay. So whenever we're roasting things in the oven, why am I not roasting garlic? Garlic is like amazing. Okay, so I found some garlic, right? Quick, like, I mean, just look at the size of the garlic in the UK. It's huge. In India, we get like teensy weensy garlic. So I'm just gonna take a couple of cloves of garlic. Okay, now I'm making a bit of a mess. Sorry, I know. I'll clean it up as soon as I'm done. Right. So I got about like a couple of cloves of garlic because roasted garlic is just, it's delicious. All right, so let's get that in the oven. Just, oops. I'm randomly throwing it in. And done. Right, so great. We got some roasted garlic. So, you know, all the duck fat is going to render out and you can save that duck fat and use it. Even the poussin, poussin is going to, uh, you know, render some time, whatever is there and the skin will crisp up. And uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, delicious roasted garlic, which we can mash. And uh, yeah, it's going to be so cool. Right. Oh, but I love this cabinet. Look at Anu's cabinet. It's in the wall. It's so cool. And she's got all her stuff here. Hey, Anu, I'm sorry. I'm showing people your house or maybe I'm not. Uh, but Anu has a beautiful house as you get this. It just like goes into the wall. Look, it's invisible. Right. Now we can raid Anu's fridge as well also. So... We got some cauliflower here, which I am making uh, keto cauliflower pav bhaji for Anu. And uh, yeah, we got some cheese. I bought some haggis yesterday. I don't know how many of you have ever eaten haggis, but I love haggis. This is my, oh, I love haggis. And I'm not on keto right now, so uh, I can eat haggis. And we got some parma ham. Oh, yeah. And I made Kerala beef for Anu yesterday as well. So uh, there's some of that stuff lying in there. Right. So, great. We got time now, guys. Yes, Anu took an avocado to work. Excellent. I'm very glad. Uh, Jump High just ordered two of my t-shirts. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And you lost 70 pounds in nine months. That's amazing. Right. So, um, yeah, I could make some guacamole since there is avocado and uh, I can also, uh, you know, I'm sure my Indian friends would love to watch me cut a perfectly ripe avocado because we struggle to get uh, reasonably priced avocados in India. We get like really expensive uh, avocados or avocados that are very, very tricky to, uh, you know, to kind of ripen them in, in Bombay at least. Uh, so, yeah. Also, my coffee needs a bit of reheating. Oh boy, this is a busy, busy live stream. And of course, there's a microwave here. You know what I don't understand? I find that a lot of people phobic of microwaves. And I haven't understood that. Like, you know, I mean, I know we're in the age of information and there's a lot of rubbish information out there as well. Like people getting paranoid about microwaves. Like guys, microwaves are absolutely safe. They're like there is so much research to prove there's nothing wrong with the microwave. It doesn't do any of that stuff that people sort of uh, have made it a kind of thing to like, you know, oh, microwaves are dangerous. It's like nuclear radiation. No, it's not. It's just heat, guys. Like take a chill pill. Yes, Gressingham makes amazing. Oh, yes, it would be amazing to make a tandoori poussin. Like 30 seconds is enough time. Right. Oh, guys, I'll show you how sunny it is in Brighton suddenly. And it's lovely, nice and warm, um, you know. So I'm also going to be doing a live stream tomorrow. But tomorrow I am going to be taking you guys around Brighton. So we're just going to go on a walking tour of Brighton tomorrow around the same time. Check this out. How good, beautiful is this? Nice and sunny. 
Yeah, I love Brighton. It's a it's a lovely city, and it's got a little sandwich shop there, Banjo Sandwich Shop, which I've never been to. And yeah, look at it, nice. And I really like these the coffee from Small Batch. It's a nice place, and there yeah, are lots of other stuff down there. Mm. Oh, look at the buses. Ooh, Brighton and Hove. Yeah, speaking of which, we have our, a keto meetup at uh, on uh, Saturday here in Brighton. So if any of you by by chance are living in Brighton or want to drive down to Brighton uh, for the weekend, uh, I will see you on Saturday, actually. Um, you know, um, I'm, um, yeah, we're doing it at... Uh, the Post and the Telegraph, that's a weather spoons uh, near the beach uh, on Saturday at 6 p.m. Hello, lax lifters. Namaskar. <laughs> right. So, great. I think we've got a lot of time to kill now because uh, the duck is going to take 90 minutes and the poussin is going to take 45 minutes. And I have set a timer with Alexa, uh, who is, yeah. I'm sorry if anybody else's Alexa went off in the house because <laughs> that happens sometimes, you know. Uh, I remember once I was doing a live stream and I said, hey, Google. And like four or five people said, hey, my Google home went off. So, yeah. Hey, Kushbu, how are you? Uh, hello, Betty's cooking channel. Right. <laughs> awesome. Good to see so many of you here. Thank you guys for joining me, for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. Wow, it is sunny now, like the sun is out. It's a lovely neighborhood, yes. And I'm having, and uh, yeah, check it out. Ealing Broad Bean. Hello, Bona, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm, we are waiting on the, uh, the poussin and the duck legs, which we're cooking. From Fairfax, Virginia. Any plans to promote DR in the UK? Well, my band has toured the UK quite often, actually. Last year, we played uh, 10 shows across the UK, and then we came back in August for the Bloodstock Festival. So it's been, uh, we've, we've, we've promoted ourselves here quite a lot, to be honest. Me and my mate, Kate, super excited to be meeting you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, always. Your thoughts on keto versus paleo? Uh, so my thoughts are this, do whatever works for you, honestly. You know what, uh, I realized something over the three years that I have been on and off keto is that uh, there's no one diet fits all, you know. Uh, some people do well on paleo, some people do well on keto, some on vegan, some on carnivore, some on, um, you know, low fat. Everybody's different. So, you know, why force your life choices on everybody else, right? If you feel good doing keto, by all means, do keto. If you feel good doing paleo, then do paleo. You know, a lot of it has to do with what is your, uh, what are you trying to achieve with your diet? You know, are you doing it just to lose weight? Are you doing it, you know? Uh, Kushbu says she's not losing weight, but she has PCOS, PCOS and hyperthyroid. So you automatically have a disadvantage compared to other people, you know, and I think uh, it's important that you just focus on your overall health and uh, well-being, you know, rather than just looking at weight loss. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm not a doctor, so it's, I really can't advise you properly on this, but I think you should maybe see somebody who is a specialist, especially if you've got uh, issues like PC or thyroid, so somebody can guide you. Uh, keto snacks. Well, I generally avoid snacking on keto, uh, to be very honest. And if I do, uh, a piece of cheese or a sausage or something like that is what I will eat. A ham and lettuce wrap. Oh, yeah. What was my main reason for doing keto? Very honestly, weight loss without exercise. That's the only reason I started keto because I saw firsthand that you could lose weight without exercising, you know. So a lot of people are always curious about how I do keto. So I might as well tell you guys about my way of doing keto. So I do intermittent fasting along with keto. 
because um, for me, it's intermittent fasting helps me to eat less food. It allows me to not have to think about three different meals in a day. I think about two meals and I'm sorted lunch and dinner. <coughs> sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Uh, sorry about my apologies. Excuse me, please. My wife's going to shout at me for that coughing on camera. Right. So as I was saying, I, <laughs> sorry, I, I do intermittent fasting and I generally try and eat my dinner before 10 p.m. And I eat my first meal around 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I drink black coffee when I'm fasting. So that keeps the hunger at bay. I also work out in a fasted state. So I will exercise in the morning at maybe 9 or 9.30. And I'll have a cup of coffee when I wake up at 7 in the morning. And I will have another cup of coffee if I feel like it at about 11, 11.30. And then I will eat my first meal at 1.30 or 2 o'clock. Uh, and I will only eat lunch and dinner. I will actually avoid eating anything in between. I will eat my dinner by about 8 or 8.30 p.m. ideally. And um, I will have a cup of coffee between my meals. Sometimes I may snack, but largely I don't snack. I have a heavy lunch so that I don't feel hungry till dinner. That's what works for me. Bona... Uh, wants to know about weight loss. So, Bona, here's the thing. If you're looking to lose weight, then you need to eat in a calorie deficit. Uh, the one-to-one -one ratio is not going to be as problematic as the calorie deficit is, uh, you know, because uh, right now, if you're eating like fat and protein at about one-to-one, -one, you might be building muscle. You might sort of, your body might be transitioning from, you know, uh, being more fatty to dropping body fat, but building muscle. So unless I know exactly how many calories you consume in a day, it's hard to know. But uh, I'd say if you got a trainer, then you're paying him for a reason because you trust his uh, uh, sort of instinct, you know. Uh, he knows your history. He knows your current plan. So maybe just trust him for a bit. And if it takes a while and you don't feel like you're seeing progress, then maybe look at other options. Do you think we should cut that avocado now? Let's do that, no? Let's get some, let's, let's, like, let's get to the avocados. Opening the fridge up once again. Like so. Look at these avocados. The only thing I don't like is the amount of plastic that they use. All right, so let's get the, oops, I left the fridge open. Let's get a tomato as well. Lovely tomatoes. Whoa. Hang on. I need to shut this drawer. So the camera's in the fridge right now. I need two hands. Oh! I also got some asparagus. Look at this beautiful asparagus. Yummy. In India, you don't get asparagus. I mean, it, you do, but it costs a lot. Let's get some coriander as well. So uh, I can put some tomato, some onion, and some avocado and make like a guac, a nice guacamole, guacamole. Right. So let's do that. Don't worry, I'm not keeping the phone in the fridge for very long. Right. Let's get a cutting board. There's one. I just need my coffee, the last sip. I take like an hour to eat. We also need a bowl for the guacamole. Hmm. That looks like a nice size bowl. What you should do, right? Um. Anna, since you've asked, I will actually put this on my website since you have asked. Um, yeah, even I want to see how I cut the avocado. Now I'm really nervous because there are people watching me. So let's get a spoon. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this should do. Right. Oh, okay, wait, let's adjust the camera. Right, there's the avocado. So what I do is I normally just, I, I mean, okay, there's the seed. So I would cut it like that. And then I would just twist it. And then I think you're supposed to do this. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> the knife is, I don't want to blunt the knife, but yeah, I think it's supposed to. I'm working. I'll just use a spoon and I guess. Okay. And then I got it out. Got a little avocado on me. I'll just throw this. Right. So we got the boat avocado. One pound only. That is a hundred Indian rupees. That's cheap. So now what I like to do is I like to just put on the knife. And just make squares. And then with a spoon, just scoop it out. Wow, it's beautiful. Oops. Clean. So we'll just cut into the flesh, to the skin. that you can cut however thick or thin you like and then across and then with the spoon just get it all out Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oops. Done. So I'm actually a bit nervous <laughs> doing this live. Yeah, somebody was saying it was cutting out or the network was bad. Is that is it okay now? Is it all right? So I'm going to cut one tomato for this and maybe some onion. Okay. Oh, look at these firm, plump tomatoes. I just need one. I'm not gonna put too many to me. This is, you know what? I actually have, Anu has her scale here. The scale. Let's weigh this tomato. What? 65 grams. That's, that's doable. I could eat the entire thing. It would be cool. All right, let's chop the tomato. I'm very nervous now. Ooh, they're firm tomatoes, very firm. Chop the tomatoes, put it in the That. And then chop squares, nice fine dice of the tomato. It's pretty much done. We got 
got tomato and yeah i use the seeds and everything i don't like wasting stuff so i'm not very particular or coriander and a little bit of salt lime and maybe a little bit of cumin even yeah i'm okay with i'm okay with the lectins and the tomato seeds i don't eat that much of it uh, but yeah if you're if you're worried about it definitely massive onions look at the size of the onions like big is the big is my head now i don't need the whole onion i just need like a piece of it so let's get this one out let's put this back in right right let's just as it's a huge onion yeah. huge onion get some of that skin off right i mean it's massive so i'm literally just going to take a part of it like i literally want like just this much so i'm going to cut you know there you go and and it's going to take the out the skin off oh there's so many layers on this onion right wow the onion huge damn son right let's chop that up chop it nice small oh these onions are just like falling apart No, they're slipping. They're slipping away from me. Oh no. I'm going to have to do like some tricks now with this. I have to do the Hang on, do the So I cut them really small. Also, I don't have my own knife, so I'm a little <laughs> like out of my depth. You know, for every chef, having his own knife is really important. Like, you get used to the weight and the sharpness and everything of your knife. But I think I'm doing an okay. Am I doing an okay job, guys? Let me know if I'm doing an okay job. So we got all the onions chopped. That's a good amount of onions. Let's get them all together. In fact, there might be a few too many. Oh, it's okay. I'll just have onion breath. It's a good thing I don't have to kiss my wife after this, so because she would not like this. Onion breath, onion breath, doing whatever the onion breath, something like that. Right. And now we need some. Whoa. We need some aromatic coriander. Chop coarsely. Right. Get a little bit out. That should be about enough. That yeah, should be enough. Chop coarsely. That's not working. <laughs> Roll it up like a cigar, and just give it one more. Oh, I can really smell that coriander, and in it goes into our guacamole. Make sure all of it is in. Right. So here's the guacamole. Yeah. Right. So there's the guacamole. Just make sure get all the coriander in. I'm gonna put. I need some cumin, but I'm going to put some salt first. A little bit of salt, right? Now, you guys, with me, because we got to get some ground cumin.
like Anu has some ground cumin. Should I switch over from? Uh, can we put some cumin in? Just a wee bit. And uh, need some lemon juice or lime juice, whatever you have lying around. All right, see you guys. Whoever's leaving, thank you for showing up. Thank you for spending your time with me. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Right now, I don't know if Anu has a, a squeezer, but like I'm gonna just try and make this happen. Right, let me see if I can fix the connection. Uh, my uh, uh, 3G or 4G, so hopefully the connection is better. You guys let me know. Uh, I'm gonna just take out some of the seeds from the lime. All right, <laughs> it's gonna squeeze some of this lemon juice in. Oh yeah. Okay then, right, so let's check it out. Here we are, let's give it all a good mix. Mash it up a little bit. And it's done. And now I'm going to taste it. Yeah. Avocado, lemon juice, a little bit of cumin. Um, if you like spicy food, you could put some chili in this. You can see nice chunky pieces of avocado. I don't know if I can make it focus on the roots. But yeah, nice chunky pieces of avocado. Let's let's dig in. Oh yeah, sorry, that's good, no complaints, that was excellent. So we've got some guac, we've got our poussin in the oven, and we've got uh, the duck legs cooking. Maybe we should have a look and see if, if it's okay. We'll have a look, let's, let's show you guys what's happening in the oven. Oh. Looks good. Looks like it's cooking. Looks good. Um, yeah, we'll attend to it later. I hope it's cooking. If it's not cooking, it's going to be a complete failure. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking maybe I'll need to, because it's got another 45 minutes at least to cook. I mean, the poussin will be ready earlier. But the duck legs are going to take some time. So, yeah. Should I just hang around? You guys got 90 minutes to spend with me till the duck legs are ready. Let me know. But, yeah, otherwise I could come back in about 45 minutes. Because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you, you want to spend an hour and a half on YouTube watching me live. I'm not sure how much uh, sense that makes. But uh, up to you. I could stay. I got nothing else to do. This is what I'm here for. <laughs> Go for a walk. Could do that. But actually, I'll have to wait till the poussin comes out and then there's 45 minutes more for the duck. And that eating that uh, guacamole has made me a little hungry now. Because I haven't eaten anything since the morning. So this is my first bite of food. And I have some lovely non-keto stuff that I was going to eat as well, which I can do. Maybe I should have some parma ham. Anyway, you guys let me know <laughs> what, what you'd like me to do. Because literally, this is all for you guys. 
Don't do it. What am I not doing? Uh, Sahil, have you ever tried deboning a chicken leg and using it to make like a roll? Uh, and I'm not on keto. And I haven't been on keto for a bit. So it's okay. It's no big deal. Like I'm not gaining weight. I'm not having an issue with it. So that's okay. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so I have tried deboning a chicken leg and I have successfully done that, but I haven't used it to roll up anything. Most of the time, if I do rolled up chicken dishes, I use a chicken breast because it's just more even, uh, you know. So we're cooking the, the meat low and slow at like 160, so it should not technically dry anything out. I need to have a better look at it. I'm going to just... Oops. Make sure that it's looking okay. Because I'm not... Uh, interesting. Yeah, so you can see the... You can see the fat has rendered out here. And you can see this is, is crisping up the skin. Yeah. And that too. Yeah, slowly but surely it's doing it. Nice. So let's put that back in. Right. So. Right. So let me get back to. Yeah. Sorry. What are you saying? So in Thaibo, in. I, I didn't say anything to you, Alexa. Damn it, Alexa. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> come up to Yorkshire. <laughs> right. So, okay. There's a Thai recipe where they debone a chicken leg and stuff it. I will definitely look into that. That sounds pretty exciting. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have 10 minutes left on your 45 minute timer. Right. So, 10 minutes for the poussin to be ready. Uh, I feel like the Poussin needs some color still. It doesn't look very colorful. Um, so let's see what we can do to to sort of, uh, you know. And even the duck, because obviously we're cooking it low and slow, there isn't much color on it. So let me see if Anu has a basting brush. Uh, so I have an idea. Anu does have a basting brush, and hopefully uh, it doesn't smell like duck and ruin one of her desserts. I know I don't know if this is only a sweet basting brush, but uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is there's duck fat that has oozed out. I'm going to brush the poussin with the duck fat. Now, I don't know how to film this and do it at the same time, but let's give it a go. Or maybe you can watch me from here. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Right. It's a pastry brush. Oh, but it's it's silicone, right? It You can baste also with it. I'll try using a spoon, wait. Right. Okay, I could use the spoon. Oh yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. So what I did was I just basted the poussin in the duck fat and uh, basted the duck as well, I guess. So I'm thinking for the last five minutes of the poussin cooking, I'm going to up the temperature so that it browns a little bit. Hey, Alexa, how much time on the timer? Right, so eight minutes, let's up the temperature so that the skin crisps up on both things. Now let's up it to about 220. Right, hopefully I won't burn it. But yeah, let's give it a go. You got nothing to lose, right? 
Because see, if I mess up in the kitchen, I'm going to eat it anyway. That's that's my unless it's inedible, which I don't think it'll be. So yeah, this is a very long live stream, boy. <clears throat> By the way, if you guys think I should just come back later when the food is all ready, let me know <laughs> because we'll be here for a while, I guess. All right, there are anyway only like I think a small percentage of people watching now. So let me know. I can come back in a bit. Actually, should I do that? I come back at one thirty in about half an hour, or so because I I think that makes more sense, right? Okay. If you guys want me to stay live, I'll stay live because I've got all the time in the world. Tell us a story. All right. What what kind of a story would you like me to tell you? Once upon a time, there was a prince. The prince was morbidly obese and his mother and father kept feeding him because he was a prince and he had a lot of food around him. But the prince had many self-esteem and body issues. Even though he was a prince, he didn't feel like a prince because every time he looked in the mirror, he didn't feel good about himself. So the prince embarked on a journey to lose weight. He conducted many scholars and many learned dietitians in the kingdom and all of them tried and failed. Then one day, the king was watching his YouTube channel, uh, watching YouTube actually, and he stumbled upon a channel called Headbanger's Kitchen. And he saw many delicious recipes. And he wondered to himself, how could I lose weight eating all these delicious dishes? Then the king, I mean, the, the prince, stumbled upon a playlist on that very channel called Keto 101. And the king watched all the videos in that playlist and he understood how to do the keto diet himself. And the king started his keto journey. And within a couple of months, he had dropped 10 kilograms and he was starting to feel better about himself. Then the prince lost even more weight, but he realized that weight was just a number and that he had to get stronger and bigger and more muscular. So he started exercising along with his keto lifestyle. And within six months with good heavy weight lifting and a small amount of cardio, the prince was now looking like a god. And then all the girls in the kingdom wanted a piece of the prince, but the prince, knew his true love. It was the girl who loved him when he was fat, not the ones who loved him for his sexy new body. And so the prince with his old girlfriend live happily ever after. The end. That's, <laughs> that was, it's not a bad story. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't be any cheesier. Thank you, Francesca. <laughs> Are you Indian? Yes, I am from India. I am currently in the UK on a holiday, though. Um, therefore, yes. Right. Um, hey, Alexa. How much time on my timer? You have four minutes left on your 45-minute timer. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Four minutes. Um, right, let's talk about some stuff. Can you say a phrase in Hindi? Ha ji, kya bolu aapke liye? Aapko kya sunna hai? Hum bas itna chate hai ki aap barato ka swagat paan parag se ki jiye. Paan parag? Ye li jiye paan parag. Paan parag, paan masala, paan parag. All right, so... Uh, Lax Lifters is asking me, what are your thoughts on how chefs are not properly compensated? Uh, in what way exactly? Do you mean just like uh, what what the pay scale is for people in the food industry? I'm not quite... Uh, I mean, I definitely think like the people who... I mean, chefs who work in restaurants are working really hard. In fact, anyone in the uh, service industry is is working quite hard. And I mean, I guess, you know, Look, the funny thing is we pay millions to people who sit in offices and do paperwork 
and we pay pittance to the people who collect our garbage and clean our sewers and our gutters. And frankly, if it wasn't for those people, I guess we'd be swimming in our own shit, you know. Uh, and it's it's really strange. I mean, just that's just how the world has evolved, I guess, you know. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's it's it's. I mean, the best thing you can do is always make sure that you leave a kind word for the chef. You tip your wait staff, and you do whatever you can, you know. Uh, do I still have a craving now and again for bread? And if so, what is my go-to? Well, so to be really honest, I've gone uh, gone off keto enough times to eat bread, so I don't really eat it while I'm on keto, and I don't crave it either. Hello, Dipti actors. What? Su tame Gujarati bolo bolo cho. Ha mane Gujarati aave che bau. People who are overpaid, yes, actors, of course, actors are overpaid. Yeah, lax lifters, I guess that's the truth, man. Like, I mean, inequality, uh, income disparity, those are just things, you know, that... uh, Oh, Paula Armstrong, I work with a lovely Indian guy. Is there something easy you can teach me to say to him which will make him smile? Just say, Aap kaise ho? Means, how are you? Uh, Aap kaise ho? Which means, how are you? Or if you want to tell him he's beautiful, you can say, Aap bahut sundar ho. Which means, you are very beautiful. Aap bahut sundar ho. My brother wants to have a beard like yours. Absolutely. I think everyone should have a beard like mine. Or like actually better beard. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. You're too kind. Right. So let's see if our poussin is getting ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, the skin is puffing up. Oh, man. I want to just like. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Okay. I forgot that. The smell is incredible, guys. I Wow. What a smell. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to take out a plate now because the poussin is ready. Okay. Yeah, let's get a plate out here because I got to get the poussin out of the roasting tray and onto a plate and then keep put the roasting tray back. Uh, uh, yeah, I know we're talking about a serious subject, laxi lifters. Yeah, but you know, I mean... Uh, Hopefully, the food industry will change. All right. Uh, Hey, Alexa, stop the timer. Hey, Alexa, stop the timer. Okay, great. Now, let's get the poussin out of the oven. The oven mitts. And let's lower the oven temperature also to 160 now. Whoa. My glasses are getting fogged up. Okay, let's get this up. So I'm going to use a little trick. Actually, not. That's not going to work. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. This goes back in the oven. Hey, Alexa, set a 45 minute timer. 45 minutes. All right, guys, it's done. Oh, yeah, look at that. I think that looks pretty good if you ask me. i move this away. But yeah, a pretty nice looking poussin. Right. 
So uh, thank you, lax lifters. You are too kind. But yeah, here we go. Here's our poussin. Looks cooked. Skin looks crispy. So now the thing is, if I want to put this recipe up on my website, I can't eat this now. So what are we going to do? Do I taste this now once it's rested a little bit? Or do I... It looks crispy. Feels crispy. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm sure I'll do a recipe sometime. So I'm going to definitely taste this after five minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah. So I generally don't like roasting birds like this. I like to spatchcock the bird and roast it because I always feel it tastes better um, when you spatchcock it because the breast and the legs never cook at the same temp. In fact, there's some blood oozing out of the the uh, the, the poussin. So I have a feeling it may not be fully done, though I followed the instructions properly on the packet. Uh, but we will find out soon enough. <laughs> What I'm cooking right now will be an $80 meal at a French restaurant. Wow. Well, maybe I should open my own restaurant then. 7 a.m. in Western Canada. And <laughs> you're messing up my schedule of eating. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, this poussin looks very good. Maybe I could just cut the thread off. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a rubber band. That's so cool. I, I know you can't see it, but like the, the thread which they've tied the thing with, it's like it's got stretchiness. I'm going to keep licking. Mm, mm, paprika. All right, let's see if we can do that. So this is what I mean. See, like it's a, it's a stretchy string. Like it's a stretchy string. So like, oh, there. It comes out. Oh, it's hot. Oh, nice. Right. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Oh. Splashy splash is happening. Nice. Oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, hot, hot, hot. Oh, there it is. Threads out. I'm going to throw this somewhere. Let's keep the knife here. Sorry about that. Licking my fingers like a gross caveman. Whoa. Right. So, I'm still waiting for this to sort of rest. I guess you need to let your meat rest, right? Rest the meat, they say. I'm just like looking at it. This is ooh, interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if you got any comments. Have I found any UK foods which are new to you that you love? Well, that's the reason I'm making pusong. Because you don't get pusa in India. Why did I join you during a dry fast? Hello, kimchi goddess. Lovely to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> right. I'm very tempted to cut this up right now. Like, I am i don't have the patience to let it rest. Should I let it rest? You let me know, actually. Should I let it rest? Oh, yeah. Should I let it rest? Right. I mean, it is hot though. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can give you a bit of a better visual. Right. Okay. So I can. Oh, goodness. It's just, oh, wow. Oh, dude. Like the, the bone has just come off. Like, it's just that. Oh, wow. Oh, let's get some skin. Oh, wow. Skin, skin, skin. Oh, man. Oh, dude. Oh, hello, mama. Oh man. Mm. Wow, that is moist moisture city. Look at the steam coming out of it. 
Mmm. Oh, dude. Dude, dude, dude. Oh, hello. I mean, just look how juicy that chicken is, guys. It's juicy. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm -mm -mm. That is super flavorful, guys. And I'm cleaning up the bone. Hello, mama. Mm -mm -mm. That's so good. Wow. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Mm -mm -mm. Hang on. Right. You guys need to like literally like falling off. My like crispy skin. Yeah. Like you saw how that came off, right? It like literally just it's like amazing. You can see all the juices there. Look at that soft meat. Like it's moist. Look at the moisture. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, I think it's about 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon. Look at that. In Brighton. Brighton, the beautiful city of Brighton. That's insane. That is so good, guys. Like, if I didn't have to wait for the duck, I would be eating the rest of that. Oh man, that meat was moist and tender, succulent. I mean, can't ask for anything else. Have you watched any MasterChef on TV? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a huge fan of MasterChef Australia. Not so much of the other MasterChefs, but MasterChef Australia has always been like my one of my favorite shows. I'm trying to sneak another. Ooh. Oh, that is so good. Mm. Oh, man. So it doesn't really have a huge thigh. It has. Interesting. Good. Oh. It's got a little baby wing. Hang on. There you go. I pulled out a wing. A wing tip. Mm, yummy. I'm sorry I'm being disgusting, but like, that's the wing. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. I feel like a king, like a French king. Hmm. Yeah. No complaints. This is this is heavenly. Oh baby. Oh yeah. Let's get the tie out. Wow, hello. Oh my God, the juice is in the plate. Skin. Skin. I want to bring the plate forward. Look at this meat. It's just dripping with juiciness. Like it's, it's just juicy. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Mm. Mm. 
that's the thigh bone it's cooked perfectly it's just it's just oozing like juice but no blood Oh wow. I'm sorry guys, I'm just like eating shamelessly in front of you. I guess I was hungry. Cuz I did work out today. Even though it was a small HIIT workout, it was not like a big workout. So yeah. Okay, now I'm going to be a good boy and put this away. Hang on. and i'm going to be an even better boy and uh, wash my hands uh the cookbook is going well it's my work is done I'll wipe my face a bit as well right so my cookbook i finished my work it's gone to the publishing company they're working on the design and all those things and once the pre orders or something is ready i'll let you guys know for sure all right fantastic <laughs> right yeah that's this is a long live stream guys should i should i come back in a while because the duck is going to take hey alexa how much time left on the timer you have 42 minutes left on your 45 minute timer so another half an hour for the duck guys are you waiting or or do we just like, like do i come back in half an hour i know you guys said stay but like i'm surprised you aren't tired and sick and tired of me How long do you wait between meals? So, like I said, I normally eat lunch at around one thirty or two p.m. and I have dinner about eight p.m. and I have a cup of coffee in between between four thirty and five somewhere. Between meals, so like two to eight, yeah, six hours maybe. And I make sure that I eat well enough that I don't need to snack in between. And same with dinner, so I eat enough so that I don't wake up feeling hungry. So yeah, that's that's my day of eating, my planned day of eating. Ooh, and that guac is there. Oh man, so much food! Yum, yum, yum. But the duck is yet to be eaten. Let's have some childhood memories, please. What kind of memories are we talking about? So I always loved food as a kid, and uh, my grandfather was a really good cook. Uh, he used to, uh, I mean, this was before I was born, but he used to like hunt and. uh kill his own prey and like he'd cook deer and uh, lots of stuff my mom would tell me stories about this um yeah so um my favorite cheat meal i guess pizza or burgers or something with basically bread is my cheat meal or rice how long is it going to take again so the duck's going to take 30 minutes more it's been in there already for uh, 45 minutes and it took me about 15 minutes to eat the poisson and uh, yeah So it's it's basically the duck legs take about ninety minutes to cook. Uh, that's what it says. So yeah, that's that's the idea. Slow and let all the fat render out and just like oodles. You can wait. I can wait. I really should not complain then. Though I might eat another spoon of that guacamole because uh, it is delicious. I feel really bad about doing this though. Like I'm eating like like it's my lunch time. a oh, nice piece of tomato as well mm. all right got some interesting questions let's answer those would you ever save the fat for another use absolutely so whenever i cook bacon duck pork anything i always save the fat never throw away the fat right now another question that's of different importance lax lifters wants to uh, say so going back to income disparity what are your thoughts on the stigma associated with pursuing a career as a chef or a cook so um well that's interesting because i think for any creative field you always have to fight um i guess your parents who have aspirations for you or, or want you to do something else with your life uh, the thing is you also have to realize are you becoming a chef or are you becoming a cook because chefs make money cooks don't probably make as much money and people who are chefs often come from higher income groups 
middle class or richer people who can afford to go to a culinary school. So when you join a restaurant, you probably may start at the bottom, but you very quickly will get into a better paying position and more likely to run it from a business perspective. Um, you know, I'm sure with your background in music, how do you deal with the doubt about pursuing your music and passion for food? Here in LA, a lot of Indian people are in tech or medicine. No, that's true. Look, most Indian parents want their kids to become doctors or engineers, something that pays you a lot of money. Uh, this is what you have asked me is very complex because so, for example, someone like myself, I come from a middle class family, which means unlike most people in the UK, USA who pursue music and live on minimum wage or, you know, uh, are okay with that lifestyle. Someone like me would probably not be living, able to live in a chawl in India and live on minimum wage kind of thing because that disparity between the rich and poor is huge. So someone like me pursuing music has to look at music as, um, I have to look at doing music in a way that can earn me the kind of lifestyle I've grown up with. So Someone like me who pursues music would work as in, in like making jingles or Bollywood songs or things like that. Being a metal musician or a live non-commercial musician would not make me be able to survive. Cooking, on the other hand, if I studied, I could come back and run a restaurant or I could be a head chef, which might actually give me the income that I would be comfortable with. So it's a little complex, actually. I don't know how to really explain it. It's a bit complex, but the, the point being, uh, you do what you got to do, you know? Right. My wife says to call her after I'm done cooking. Dipti, there's about 30 minutes left on the duck. Is that okay? Or will it be too late? Then I'll call you. Then I will take a break from the live stream and come back, I guess, if it's important. Now, for me, as you were saying, lack lifters, I never intended to cook. This cooking thing happened as just call it fate, if you will. Like I literally was doing YouTube as a fun thing. And then when I got tired of it, I said, I'm going to just do it my way. And then because I was doing keto, I said, let me make recipe videos. And suddenly the channel took off. So it became my job. But I would have never been the kind of guy who wants to be a chef in a restaurant where you go and you, you know, work your ass off on your feet all day. That's not what I would have done. I, for me, I would I would struggle like that for my music, but not so much for food. So it's it's interesting how things worked out. I can't complain though, to be very honest. <laughs> yes, Diabolik is my wife. <laughs> yeah. So when I use when I save up fat from all these cooks, I just use it for regular cooking. So if I'm making like uh, so, my friend Anu yesterday. Uh, we cooked uh, some beef and there was a lot of fat left from the beef. So she just made her scrambled eggs in those beef drippings in the morning, you know. So, yeah, uh, it's just just use it as regular cooking fat. Yeah, you can cook your vegetables in the beef fat, in the pork fat, anything. In fact, like, like as you can see right now, I'm roasting the garlic along with the duck breasts, you know. Um, so, yeah, the duck, duck legs, sorry, not duck breast. Right. So yeah, that's that's that I guess. Yeah, and I feel it's 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 important to save the fat. You know, I mean the animal has died for our food, so we should try and use up as much of it as we can, waste as little. It's just my kind of philosophy when it comes to eating meat, is kind of just respect the food that you're eating. Um, you know, we are often very disconnected from the food we eat today because you walk into a supermarket. And you get these boneless pieces of chicken or slabs of beef steak. So you have no connection with the fact that it's come from an animal, that an animal has been slaughtered for your meat. Uh, so I think that's kind of important. You know, I really make sure that I, at least as from my point of view, use all the animal that I possibly can and waste nothing. Right. My wife has not told me if she wants me to call right now or whatever. Okay. I guess I'm, I'm still here then. <laughs> right. Man, those duck legs, can they cook any faster? Can we cook those duck legs a little faster maybe? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess it's a product of your environment. If you grow up in a in a family where you know every piece of food is valued and and you're sort of taught that value growing up, uh, you will sort of yeah, um, totally like that's your that's your values then you know. But if you grow up where like oh you're allowed to waste food because it's in plentiful and your family is not struggling and yeah, I mean, I guess oh, well, uh, lax lifters. That's my kind of. I mean. That's how I am, I guess. Uh, it, it it does feel like I'm chatting with friends, you know. It does not feel like I'm... Hi, and welcome to Headbangers Kitchen. Today's episode, we're going to be cooking up some poussin and some duck legs. And if you've never cooked these up, well, today is a good time to start. I genuinely do feel like I'm chatting with my friends. And I feel... Uh, yeah, it, it, I look forward to coming to the US or wherever you guys are someday and, and having a keto meetup there as well and, you know, getting to chat with you guys in person. Hey, the Metalheads Engineers is here. That guy knows how to be an engineer. Right, let's have a look at the duck legs meanwhile. Oh, damn, they're looking good, man. They're looking good. Let's see if I can. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, and that's some good stuff at the bottom right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's my poussin. And there's my guacamole. Ah, <sighs> right. And I gotta make sure I clean up the kitchen as well because, uh, yeah, what's the time? It's one thirty. Okay, we're good on time. I need to wrap up by like I think about two ish, two fifteen maybe tops. Right. Yeah, duck fat is delicious. Oh, yeah, duck fat. But I know it's not keto, but like if you're off keto and you ever get to eat duck fat potatoes, oh, my God, like, oh, duck fat potatoes, that's a thing. But I guess you could do duck fat cauliflower as well. Roasted duck fat cauliflower. That's some good stuff right there. Right. What else are we doing now? We're just waiting. Hey, Epiphany London, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Or oh, you've always been here and just been quiet. Right. Hey, Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have 21 minutes left on your 45 minutes hour. 21 minutes for that duck to be ready. Uh, what are your thoughts on salt? Everyone says to eat a lot of salt. Yeah, so on keto, your body is not really retaining water. So you want to consume a little more than regular normal salt. Like, and get good salt, like uh, Himalayan salt or something like that. Uh, I think that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, it's it's mainly because your body is not retaining water. So you need to have your electrolytes. They're constantly getting flushed out. I mean, I don't think you're supposed to like pop salt pills, but just make sure you're generous with the seasoning. Wow, it is really sunny suddenly. Like, hello, sun. I'm glad it's sunny, though. It's sunny and cool, not like sunny and hot. So, yeah, that's that. And, um, ooh, I see some chocolate. At least it looks like chocolate in the back. 100%. Ah, yes, duck fat radish. Absolutely. If you've got radishes where you live, you can have duck fat radishes. Well, hope the weather is good where everyone is. I'm not looking forward to going back to Mumbai or Bombay because it's going to be 40 degrees or about 36 or 37. So summer is kicked in and trust me, summer in Bombay is sweat city. Like you will be sweating. Do I take any supplements or vitamins? No, I don't. I personally don't, but you know, I, I understand why some people need them. Me personally, I'm good. Right. 20 minutes more for the duck. I feel like I should just take it out. But it won't be done. It needs to really break down and just all that fat just like break down. Yes. Celery, a great potato replacement. Absolutely. So there are options for potato replacements, you know, and I guess if you have a cheat meal or a cheat day someday, you can always have these things. That's, I think, what you can do. Ah, yes, the heat is indeed well, hot. Um, What else is happening? 
So tomorrow we're doing a live stream as well. And tomorrow I'm going to take you guys around Brighton. I'm going to walk around. Hopefully it's sunny tomorrow because that is, that's when I, I hope it's not really cold because walking around in the cold is not fun. Your hands get all frozen like But yeah. Ooh, frost on the ground. What can we do for 20 minutes, guys? I finished all the cooking I could do. Sahil, you should do videos on catering, like doing large portion for your food or parties. Yeah, I could do that. I mean, there's only so many videos I can actually uh, actually make, I guess, right? Uh, so tomorrow, I don't know what time. Um, I'm not sure what time works for everyone. But I think the morning might make more sense. Like, say, 11 or 12 uh in the morning uk time uh, that might be good for uh, for walking around i think and i might also go buy some non keto food guys so i have to warn you in advance uh, there's a particular shop that has delicious scones and oh man those i when i come to brighton that's one thing i have to have it is the ultimate food like it it's insane Indian sauces. What about Indian sauces? Did I miss a question? Indian sauces. So, yeah, my friend Anu has a guitar also. I could play you some music while we wait. Yesterday, I did a keto song while we were here. Just say no to carbohydrates. I could doodle away while we chat. It might be interesting. We have a question in the UK. What do you put on the scone first, jam or cream? That is true. So the funny thing is this scone comes pre-made. So it's already got the jam and cream in it. So I don't have to actually answer that sauces per se in India. I mean, we have gravies, which I've already done. I've done sagwala, I've done makhanwala, I've done, ko, uh, not. I, I need to do a korma. But I've done a whole bunch of Indian recipes. Definitely check those out on the channel. Uh, you will find a lot of stuff that's very useful, right? I could maybe do this. Okay, so the thing is, I never learned other musician songs. So I don't know Stairway to Heaven, unfortunately. I just think I know the first few notes. Yeah, that's all I know. There's something like that. I don't know anymore. And I know the... Yeah, that's about as much of Stairway to Heaven as I know. So I used to actually work in a guitar shop. So a lot of times we just like, don't play Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> ah, so do I, what I would recommend is you make, uh, whoa, I think my ear pods died. Yeah. Hear me now. I think my ear pods have died. I need to check. Whoa. No, that's not it. Anyway, can you guys hear me? Just confirm that you can hear what I'm saying.
right i don't know how to use indian spices which ones uh, are the best so uh, i've done a video on uh, indian spices as well on the channel like what i have in my kitchen uh, i'd recommend just check that video out and then just follow the basic recipe of butter chicken or sagwala and you can make that you know what videos do you have coming up imminently so i actually don't know but i know as soon as i get back to mumbai next week i'm going to start working on new recipe videos um and yeah i'm going to go and see what's on my list of things to make and i'll try and get some videos out soon keto gravy no i don't have one but maybe i'll try doing one really soon This is something called pure tone. So it's, it's just what Anu has at home. So I'm just working with it. Guitar needs some work. As I think it's uh, the intonation is a bit weird. So yeah. I do play a bit of drums and I do sing and growl and all those kind of things. Uh, and we wait for the dark. And we wait for the dark to cook. And we wait. And we wait for the dark. really not really comfy because comfy is cooking in its own fat like submerged in its fat but this duck is just roasting so waiting for the duck and we wait for the duck and we wait for the duck and we're running out of love Just make sure the skin is crispy and just make sure the skin is crispy don't burn the garlic don't burn the garlic as we wait for the dark as we wait for the dark and running out of luck as we wait for the dark thank you that's that's my new song called wait for the duck coming out on headbangers kitchen records summer of 2019 So, shall we have a look at the duck? Boy, oh boy, this is the longest live stream I have ever done, nearing a hundred minutes. Hey, uh, Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have eight minutes and fifty seconds left on your forty-five minute timer. Right. So now I'm going to turn the temperature up, just to get the skin nice and brown. 
So fingers, fingers, <laughs> fingers crossed. I got to keep an eye on it now because I don't want it to burn. Oh, but that duck looks good, guys. That duck is looking really good. Like we're killing it. So I'm going to get the duck on the table directly, I guess. So I'll make sure there's some uh, appropriate heat resistant coasters. And then we'll check the duck out and then I will say bye bye. Eight minutes left on the duck. This is an exciting time. And I'm going to grab another bite of the guacamole. And guys, I just want to say thank you because you guys have been watching this live stream for I don't know how long. And uh, like, I really appreciate it because it time is money, you know, in today's day and age. And you guys spending time watching this live stream means a lot to me. Cheers to you. Mm, oh my God. A creamy avocado. Mm -mm -mm. Right. They debone and stuffed chicken wings. That's okay. That's that's difficult. I've never deboned a chicken wing. Chicken wing is difficult. Remember to call your wife. Yes, of course. I will not forget that. Oh man, that duck. Oh guys. Oh, that looks insane. I have a feeling I should just take it out now. I, f I think maybe the time is... Right, let's get back. You get you guys back to watching me from here. Right, so that's pretty much done, I think. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, doing whatever a spider can. Right, I actually think that's ready. Uh, I don't think I need to wait for eight minutes, but I'll wait for four minutes. Until then, we'll just play Spider-Man, Spider-Man, doing whatever a spider can. Maybe you can watch from here. Like, really long distance. This is the oven, my friends. And... This is my exercise. Right. So we got a few minutes more and that duck is going to come out. I'm going to bring it right here and we're just going to like, we're going to shred that duck, guys. That duck is going to get a shredding. Oh, yeah. You bet it is. Right. So turn on those alarms. Hey, Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have five minutes and 30 seconds left on your 45 minute timer. Right, maybe we'll give it. Has anyone got a question till then? Maybe that'll kill some time. If anyone has a quick question that I can answer or do something with rather than, you know, try and play another guitar tune or something like that. Just live stream. So how long it took for the duck? So the duck is taking 90 minutes. That is an hour and a half to cook the duck at about 165 to 170 degrees Celsius. Low and slow. Yes, only five minutes. So yeah, the duck took a while, but it's going to be good. I, I can feel it in my bones now, guys. I can't really feel it in my bones, but I just feel it. You know what I mean, right? Right. Um, Hey Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have four minutes and 30 seconds left on your 45 minute timer. Hey Alexa, stop the timer. Hey Alexa, stop the timer. 45 minutes timer cancelled. Excellent. Let's do this guys. Turn the oven off. Oh yeah. Oh man, look at this. Oh, look at those duck legs. And that garlic. Yes, my friends, here it is.
Oh, right. Look at that. How good does wait? I'll need. I'll do it from this side. How good does that look, guys? Look at that. Crispy. Crispy. Look at that. That's so good, right? Yeah. I mean, that is that is just perfection. Like, just look at it. It's so beautiful. Right. Let's get a let's get a, let's get some utensils. So, the fork. So, for duck, when you're cooking duck. Whoops. When you're cooking duck, it's the two fork test. All right, let's do this, guys. Okay, now it's time to kick some ass in a good way, like. I mean, I'm not even gonna wait, guys. Normally, you're supposed to let the duck rest. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, just look at that. Look at that piece of duck. Can you see it properly? I mean, it just came apart. Oops. Just look at that. I mean, there's so much sun right now. Hang on. Block some of it. Look at that. And look at that. It's, it's just the best view possible. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right. So let's take the fork. Just to keep this on top here. That's my piece. And, but like, look at that. It's just, it's just pulling apart. Look at that. It's literally just falling apart. Look at that. How good is that? Let's get back to this guy now. But yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yes, that is it. That's the money shot. To the crispy skin. Look at that. I mean, yes, that is it. Look at you can see the. Yeah, look at that. Now it's the real. It's the moment of truth, guys. Oh, the smell. Let me get away from the sun. Let's stand in front of a nice painting. Oh. That skin, that duck. Okay, guys. Yeah. Time for me to end the live stream and go and just eat that. That is so good. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do because I need to tell you. I won't show you now. But So I'm going to take both the legs out. I'm going to squash this garlic which is, as you can see, is now lovely and roasted. Yeah, I'm going to squash the garlic and deglaze this pan with water and make a sauce. And it's going to be insane. So. So that's it, guys. Um, this has been an insane live stream. It's the longest one I've ever done. I want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you who stuck around, whether you came and watched 10 minutes of it or five minutes of it. It means the world to me that you guys find 
value in what I do and that you choose to spend your time watching a guy like me just cook and eat food. It is a truly humbling experience and I want you all to know that I'm very grateful and no matter how I behave, I'm always grateful. Anyway, that's it from me. Enough jibber jabber. I will see you tomorrow for the walk around Brighton. And then for those of you who are in Brighton, I will see you on Saturday at the Keto Meetup. Thank you all once again.